You are watching With a Cup of Tea, the High Plains Book Awards edition, a production of This House of Books, an independent bookstore cooperative and tea shop in downtown Billings, Montana. Now here's our show. Welcome to This House of Books. Today we have with us Joe Wilkins, who's a finalist for the High Plains Book Award in the category of fiction. He has a book out, uh, and we're going to talk about that book in a minute. But first, Joe, maybe you could tell us a little about yourself. Yeah, well, I grew up just north of Billings, a little town called Longbone, Montana. Uh, and so Billings is sort of home territory for me. That's where we went grocery shopping, you know, where we played in our district basketball tournaments and things like that. And growing up, in a, in a rural town in eastern Montana. I was, I was a bookish kid. Um, I grew up on a hay and sheep ranch and my grandfather, you know, a real, one of the real old time cowboys, but I was, I was always bookish. Um, but I never quite thought, I didn't, I didn't think being a writer was something you could be. I didn't know that was a possibility. I think I had this idea that all the books had already been written just, you know, my turn to read them all. <laughs> and so I went off to college and studied engineering. Um, because I, I thought I really liked math. I think I just liked my high school math teacher. He was a good math teacher. And so I studied engineering and even graduated in it. But my senior year, when I finally had a little room in my really tightly packed um, engineering major, uh, other classes, I took a class and really quickly fell in love with it. Um, I wasn't even sure what it was yet, but I fell in love with the process, with making meaning, with that you could try to honor your own experience in words and honor the world in words. And so I've really been writing ever since. Um, and I taught high school for a little while, went back to grad school, and now teach uh, higher ed, and I'm writing the whole time. Okay. So, um, an interesting background as, a, <laughs> as, a, as an author, isn't it? Um, so your book uh, takes place uh, somewhat in the region where you grew up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the book. Yeah, okay. It's um, fall back down when I die right here. Um, it does, you know, that's the place I grew up um, along the Muscleshell River, north of the Bull Mountains, um, kind of west of the big dry country where my grandfather's ranch was. Um, that's that's kind of the, the landscape of my imagination. It's where I go when I, when I close my eyes, what I see first. And so I was living in Iowa at the time, actually, um, in the late 2000s, um, and looking west a lot, missing the west, and looking at the news coming out of Montana as wolves were being delisted, as um, we were starting to see more and more. Um, it had always been there, but I think it was, it was somewhat accelerated at the time. Uh, more and more people bumping up against each other, rural folks and urban folks, seeing two different things when they looked at that same landscape. And so the book sort of grew out of a desire to write my way back into that place and to see it as others saw it, not as I saw it. I, I started writing as a nonfiction writer and so sort of, you know, wrote my own stories, my own visions of things. Um, and so a novel was a chance to see it in a different way and to try to put characters who are very different next to each other and see what happens. And so Fall Back Down When I Die takes place in 2009, um, year of the first legal wolf hunt in many, many years in the state of Montana. Um, and it, it's got sort of three main characters, a young ranch hand who's, who's living out in the Bull Mountains, working for um, a bigger landowner, and he's kind of down on his luck. Um, and he just comes into, he, he's the only relative, and so has to take care of his cousin's young son. Um, and that's Wendell Newman. And so beyond everything that's happened to him, all of a sudden this boy, the seven-year-old boy is thrust into his life. And it seems like it might be the one thing that is <laughs> one thing too much, um, but, but in many ways it allows Wendell to become his best self, who, who he needs to be um, in the taking care. The other character is uh, Gillian um, Holton. She's a, a teacher in a rural school district, but she lives in Billings. She lives in Billings for the relative sort of cosmopolitan things it offers. Um, and she's, she's also a single parent. Um, her daughter's a senior in high school. Um, and she's, she's both believes in the work of being a teacher in a rural school district, but also has done it many years and is, and is getting a little tired. And um, this being a novel, of course, there are two stories. 
end up intersecting, right? Um, things begin to happen out in the Bull Mountains, in town, that force their stories together. Um, the third major character is, um, takes place a dozen years before, and he's out on the run in the Bull Mountains, and he's writing as if in a journal, um, writing to his son. And his story, though it doesn't intersect in time, begins to intersect thematically and in place, the location itself out there in the mountains. And so, you know, I think it's a book that's, that's about Montana, about Eastern Montana, um, and about the divisions that exist there. But I also think it's a book about our country right now and the divisions that exist within it um, and the ways that if we can find our way to a little common ground, a little space that we might stand on together, we, we'd see that there's so much we have in common versus what separates us. And not that, that what separates us isn't real. Sometimes it very much is. But there's all, all such that we share. So, yeah. Well, the, uh, there was a review in the Wall Street Journal. They talked about uh, uh, the theme of, of practically small-scale civil war that was yeah. hitting towns against towns and, and people against people at that time. And I, I actually do remember that pretty well because I was working in rural schools in, in mm. this area. I had a, in a co-op that, that really was as big as Connecticut. So I traveled oh, around yeah. in rural yeah. areas. And gotcha. so, uh, I, and at times I, I wondered if I needed a bulletproof vest. It was, it yeah. was pretty fun in those days. Yeah. And, you know, I do think, you know, I, I really appreciated that review in the Wall Street Journal. Um, but it did focus on the darkness in the book, and there's plenty of darkness there. <laughs> um, but, I, but, I, but I think part of that, too, is maybe an Easterner's view um, uh, of not understanding quite the, the struggles that folks to the West are, are facing. Folks in rural places all over the country are facing. And so I think that maybe the, the reviewer's focus on the darkness is a little bit of, of not knowing, right? It's, it's, it's new to him. It's a surprise in a way that to folks who live in these places, it's not. Well, yeah, one of the things I, I notice about Montana that, that uh, probably the reviewer missed is that generally when, uh, when people are in trouble and struggling, uh, a lot of people in those rural areas step up and they help each other. And that's um, not something that I've seen in uh, a number of Eastern states uh, when I've worked there. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, that that's something, too, I try to get into the book, um, that sense of being all alone together that people often often have in a rural place. And that even if there are things that divide one another, um, an emergency, a, a, a fire or a flat tire or anything in between, <laughs> um, brings the neighbors out to help. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yes. Well, I noticed that um, you're... Your book, um, Fall Back Down When I Die, is already available in uh, uh, French edition and Italian edition. Uh, yeah. How did that happen? <laughs> um, I'm not really sure. Um, I think, I think uh, yeah, there's a French edition, Italian edition and a Spanish edition as well. And um, I think my publisher knew it would be a story that would speak to, to European reading audience. Um, there's, a, there's a pretty large audience there for stories coming out of the American West. Um, and, and so, you know, they right away made sure that they, they got, it, got it sold to publishers over there. And I've been in touch with some of those publishers. I was even, um, in, in the long run, it's a small heartache, but um, just, as, just as things closed down, um, I was slated to go to France for two weeks. Um, at the end of last March and then two more weeks over the summer. And so it would have been the first time I've been there and I was very much looking forward to it, but, uh, but maybe we'll be able to reschedule. <laughs> well, that'd be good. Yeah. I noticed they, um, they changed the titles a little bit. Yeah. From, yeah. So it was the French title uh, translates to uh, these mountains forever. And the Italian title uh, uh, translates to in the land of wolves. It's yeah. So curious. Yes, yeah. I, I, was, I was especially, I mean, um, I like both those titles, but uh, the, the French title is quite close actually to the first title I had put on them, the working manuscript. Um, and so I was sort of, I thought that was a nice little bit of serendipity there. <laughs> well, that's fun. Okay. <laughs> well, you are um, 
uh, not included in the uh, pipelines book awards for the first time. In fact, you won, uh, I think in 2013 for poetry and in 2016 for short stories. And yeah. um, uh, you, you're generally, I think, better known as a poet, although, and this is your first novel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've loved, I've loved the High Plains Book Awards. I think it's such a, such a way to celebrate all the wonderful literature coming out of, of the, of the Mountain West and the High Plains West. And I'm just so grateful that, that the organization is there and that they're doing the good work they do. Um, and I'm so missing the fact that we can't gather in Billings this year because I so enjoyed being able to do that previously. Um, and yet, you know, the, the turn from, from poetry and nonfiction to, to fiction is, as I mentioned before, um, not, you know, we're always changing. Our lives are always, we're shifting and re-seeing things. But there is, in some ways, I, I feel like I've told my own story plenty. Um, and, and the shift to fiction is a chance to, to sort of listen more, to listen to other stories and to try to imagine my way into them. Um, and so I'm, I'm finding that challenging and really exciting. And so that's where I'm spending a lot of my energy writer now is in fiction. That's just fantastic. Well, Joe, I really appreciate the time you've spent with us here today to, to visit about uh, your book. Uh, we hope to see you in Billings, uh, well, as soon as we're able to travel again. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> yes, that would be wonderful. I hope so, too. <laughs> well, thanks so much. Thank you. Have a great rest of the day. You too. This program has been produced by This House of Books in collaboration with the High Plains Book Awards. The Book Awards were established to recognize regional authors and literary work that examines life on the High Plains. Nominations will be accepted starting in January 2021 on the website highplainsbookawards.org.